Hello, in this video we're going to go over how to create a combo system. So my player character has three different attacks which they can cycle between. Before we get started, if you'd like to learn how to make a combo system with light attacks, heavy attacks, air attacks and more, make sure to check out my Souls Like Melee Combat System course, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. With that said, let's get into the video. To get started, we're first going to import the animations we're going to use for our combo system. If you don't have any, I'm going to provide you with some example ones which you can download in the link in the description of this video. Although just to be clear, the ones I'm going to use in this video come from a marketplace product so I can't share them with you. Okay, so if we just right click and create a new folder in our content folder, just call this animations and then import the animations you want to use for your combo system inside of this folder. When you import the animations for the skeleton, just like the SK mannequin, that's who these animations are made for, so just go import all. Although if your animations are from another character, I made a video about how you can easily retarget animations using the latest version of Unreal Engine. I'll put that somewhere on the screen now. Okay, with these animations, so that we can use them, just select all of them, so I'm holding shift on my keyboard and selected all of the animations. Then just right click and go create and go create animation montage. Now for combat animations, they look a lot better if they're root motion animations. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If I just double click and open this up, for this animation, my player character is moving. If we scroll down and just go enable root motion and make sure that this is checked if your character is moving during a combat animation. And what that will do is it will make it so the animation will drive the movement of the character when this animation is playing. And root motion animations normally look a lot better than standing animations in combat systems. So I'm just going to scroll down. And my other two animations aren't root motion, but I'm just going to still enable them. Next, in order to make it so your character can use animation montages, just go over to your character's animation blueprint and just go over to the animation graph and just make sure that they have this default slot. This is what allows our player character to um, play animation montages. Next, I want to make it so the player character has to press the left mouse button in order to start their combo. So if we just go over to the um, third person folder, go over to the input folder and we need to create a new action for when we want our player character to do their combo. So to do that, we can just right click, go over to input, select input action and I'll just call this my input action underscore combo. I'll then just open this up. This basically stores all of the different controls I have in my game. And let's go add new mapping and just like the input action underscore combo. Scroll down, so click here. And then we just need to basically assign the button we want our player character to press in order to perform this action. So if we just select here, then press the left mouse button, it will automatically do it for us. We can then close this. And let's go over to our third person character and find some free space and just right click and look for the input action underscore combo that we just made. Then just expand this arrow and whenever my player presses the left mouse button it's going to fire off this node and we're going to write some code which will make our player character perform a combo. Okay so to get started if we just go over to variables and create any variable and just call it movement input compile this and make sure it's true. So if this movement input variable is true, then we're going to allow our player character to move because when our player character is performing an attack, I don't want them to be able to move. If we go over to the movement input here, just drag this node back a bit, then just drag up here and look for your branch. And the condition of this branch, we can just drag in our movement input and make sure we get it and just connect from here into here. So if this is true, we'll allow our player character to move. Although if this is false, then we won't allow our player character to move. Next, create another new variable and just call it attack combo. And make sure that this is an integer. Compile this. And we'll basically use this variable to keep track of what combo our player character is on. Find some free space again and just right click on it for add custom event. And just call this reset attack combo. When we call this custom event, we can just drag in our attack combo and we want to set it and make sure it's zero and just connect from here into here. 
We then just want to right click again and look for add custom event and just call this perform attack. We will call this custom event whenever we want our player character to perform an attack. And what we'll do is we can just drag in our attack combo, get it, and just drag up here and look for the increment int. This will increase the value of it by one. Then we just want to drag up here and look for a triggerable delay. And just make this two seconds. This is going to be basically how long my player character has in order to cycle through all of the different animations in their combo. We can make this a variable and change it, but for now I'm just going to make this two seconds. So my player will have two seconds to perform all of the attacks in their combo. Otherwise it will reset. Okay, now that we've done this, whenever our player character presses the started button, we just want to drag in the movement input and set it. So if we just drag it in and make sure it's true. And then we just want to create a new function and just call this perform combo. And inside of here, we'll basically decide what animation in our combo our player character should play. If we go over to variables, create a new variable and just call this attacks. Go over to the variable type and look for animation montage. We want this one and a montage object reference. Change this to be an array. So an array can hold multiple um, variables of a type. Compile this and just add three pins or however many pins you have for your combo. I'm just going to select um, my various animations and we just want to drag this in, get it, drag up here and look for the length of this and this will tell me how many items I have inside of this array. So if I just drag up here and I look for print string, connect from here into here, compile this, then if I give it to my vector off, I'm just going to drag in my perform combo. If I compile this and I close this and then I play my game, when I press the left mouse button, it print strings three because I have three attacks in my um, combo animation. Okay, we can go back inside here. When we perform our combo, we want to check to see what animation combo we should play. So if we just drag in our attack combo variable and we want to see if the value of this is greater than or equal to this value. For this value, we just want to drag up here and look for the subtract and we just want to subtract it by one. The reason we want to subtract this by one is because arrays start counting from the number zero. So this, um, as you can see, the index is zero, then, then the index here is one, then the index here is two. So in order to make sure that this is accurate, we just want to subtract this by one. That way it basically will show us the correct index. If this is true, so we just drag up here and look for branch and connect from here to here. That basically means we're on the last um, attack animation of our combo. So we want to play the last animation in our combo. To do that, we can just right click and look for the return node. And we just want to add an output and just call this animation. And for the variable type, just make this an animation montage. Select it and select object reference. So if this is true, the first thing we want to do is just reset our um, combo. That way when we run our perform attack again, it will start from the start. And then we just want to um, copy this, drag up here, and look for last index. This will basically get the last item in this array. Then we just want to drag up here and look for get a copy of. And we just want to connect from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. And this will basically play the last animation in our attack array. If this is false, however, we just want to cycle through the different animations in our combo. So we can just drag a false and look for attack. And we want this one, perform attack. And then so that we play the correct animation, we can just drag in our attacks, drag up here and look for get a copy of. And we just want to drag in our attack combo, drag up here and look for subtract. And just subtract this by one, connect from here to here. And then we just want to copy this return node, paste it and connect from here into here and from here into here. And this will cycle through all of the different animations in our player characters attack. Because when we do this, we just increase it by one. So that's why we're subtracting one here. Then we just want to go back to our event graph. After we perform our combo, so our player character plays the correct animation, we just want to drag up here and look for play animation montage. So this one play and a montage and just connect this output result into here. 
and go compile. There's one more thing um, we need to fix, but let's just test that this is working. If I click my play button and I press the left mouse button, my player character should be able to perform an attack, although if I spam it, the system looks a bit weird. So we need to make it so the player character can smoothly cycle through all of the different animations in the attack combo. If I open up my third person character, when we perform our attack combo, we actually want to just uncheck this so that the player character can't move. So if I just close this and I go play, after I do my attack, the player character can't move because we disable it. So now we basically need to make it so the player character can move after performing an attack. So in some free space again, I'm just going to right click on the add custom event and I'll just call this reset player movement. When we call this custom event, we just want to drag in the movement input and set it. So make sure this is true. Connect from here to here, then just compile this. Close this, then go over to your animations folder and open up any of the animation montages. Then go over to the point in the animation where you want your player character to be able to move again. So for me, I want my player character to be able to move again here. Then just right click and go add notify. Select new notify and just call this reset movement input. When our player character gets to this point in the animation, we'll allow our player character to move again. Just copy this though. And then we just want to paste it in all of our player characters attacking animations. So around here, I'll reset the movement input. So if I just press control V, that allow me to paste it. And then here, I will paste it. Go over to your character's animation blueprint. A quick way of doing that is we can just click here. Then just go over to the event graph. And we basically need to create a reference to our third person character so that we can call the reset player movement custom event inside of them. So we go over to the AP Manny event blueprint initialize animation. So when we um, set up this animation blueprint, it creates a reference to our character. We just want to get that reference, get it and drag up here and just cast to the third person character. This will be valid because our third person character is using this um, animation blueprint. And we just want to right click on this, promote to the variable, and we can just call this our third person character. Then in some free space again, just right click and look for the reset movement input animation notify that we set up earlier. When we get to this point in our animation, we can drag in our third person character reference, get them, and just call the reset movement, so the reset player movement, connect from here to here compile this then we just want to go back to our third person character and go over to the um, input action attack combo we just want to drag up here and have a branch and we want to check to see that the movement input is true so if we just drag this in connect from here to here only if the movement input is true will our player character to perform a combo okay let's compile and test this out now so i can click my play button and when I'm spamming the left mouse button, we can see it's just smoothly cycling through all of the different animations in my combo. So we have three animations in that combo, but if you want, you can easily have more or less. So now we've created a flexible combo system. If you'd like to learn how to create a combat system where the player character can sheath and unsheath their weapon, perform light attacks, heavy attacks, air attacks, and all types of different attacks, make sure to check out my Souls-like melee combat system course in Unreal Engine. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!